the goal of creating artificial intelligence was for them to become gods, to create a collective mind, a global computer that sees all, sees everything, to, to create an all-seeing eye. Here's how I would do it. I copy you exactly into a digital environment. Everything about you. Imagine that was possible. It probably is. So if I copy you into a machine, that copy process has all of the properties we were talking about as, as being a soul. First of all, it's immaterial, because copying, that's not a thing, it's a process. It's immortal, it's just like you. You can put it in any environment you want, heaven, hell, make a simulation. So, uh, all of these things that reside in our heads, these abstract concepts, I think that eventually we can build them and we have to decide what we want to build. They are building false realities into which they want to induct you so they can play God. The first thing I did was try to build a machine called a quantum computer. Uh, and now spin, spin out, I suppose, of my research when I was in grad school. Uh, quantum computer is a computer that uses quantum mechanics, the fundamental language of nature, at least some think, uh, to compute. So I did that for about 15 years. But I had an epiphany somewhere along that, uh, that trajectory the computers are just machines that answer questions. And the more important thing was, who's asking the questions? Computers, at least as they're currently constituted, don't ask questions. So I decided that what I wanted to do instead was try to figure out, could you build a machine like an animal? So all biological animals share certain properties. Can you build a machine like that? And so I built a machine that was a little bit like an animal. This was my second company that used something called reinforcement learning uh, in the process of making robots move. But that wasn't really what I wanted to do. What I really wanted to do was build people. So Google was set up 18, 19 years ago to build a giant artificial supercomputer based on the neuron activities of the hive mind of humanity with billions of people wired into it with the Holy internet of shit. things. And so all of our thoughts go into it and we're actually building a computer that has real neurons in real time that's also psychically connected to us that are organic creatures. This very minute my phone is connected to some hub somewhere which is connected to your phone. Uh, which is connected to a server and connected to your laptop. And if we t round up all the circuits that are connected together and treat this whole big thing of all the machines, all the phones and servers and computers connected together as if it was one big computer. And it's connected to three billion human minds. It's the stuff of a Hollywood movie, but a group of veterans has filed a lawsuit against the CIA and U.S. Army claiming that the government planted remote control devices in their brains. The claims relate to a government program at the U.S. Army's Edgewood Arsenal in Maryland. The ultimate aim would be to archive enough data on each individual to be able to make a computer model of everyone on the planet. And you're thinking there will be a hybrid of your biological thinking, the 300 million neocortical modules we all have, and a certain number of neocortical modules that are simulated in the cloud. Everything you think, everything, from your feeling of self to the feeling that you may have a soul or a, or a maker, to your preference for cilantro or not, all of those things live inside a place which is dark is a huge server bank in a dark vault somewhere with an intelligence that's potentially vastly greater than what a human mind can do. I mean, its eyes and ears would be everywhere. Every, every camera, every microphone, every device that's network accessible. That's what it, really what AI means. It's not like a robot running around. The robots would simply be, they'd be like a finger of, of the AI. If you have enough data on a person, especially biometric data, and if you have enough computing power, you can understand that person better than the person understand himself or herself. And then you can control this person, manipulate them, manipulate them, and make decisions for them. And we are getting very close to the point when Facebook and Google and the Chinese government know people far better than these people know themselves. 
democracy and the free market and individualism and liberalism, these are all predicated on the basic assumption that nobody knows me better than I know myself. So nobody should take decisions for me. And nobody really understands how I feel and what I think. And this was true throughout history. Nobody really knew who you are and how you feel. Even if the Catholic Church or say the KGB in the Soviet Union followed you around everywhere and always listened to every conversation you have and analyzed it and so forth, they still didn't know who you are. They still didn't really know how you feel and what you think because they didn't understand biology well enough and they didn't have enough computing power to make sense of these immense amounts of data. So this was always true, but it's no longer true now. Somebody like Google or like the Chinese government will have enough data on you, enough understanding of biology, and enough computer power, computing power to understand you better than you understand yourself, to understand your feelings, your thoughts, your desires, your obsessions. You don't know why you feel the way you feel, but Google knows, or the Chinese, Chinese government knows, an entity that we created, but now it is controlling us. It is shaping our society, our views, our decisions. Will it have a mind of its own? Yes. Yes. If we keep adding brains, artificial brains and artificial memory to this big machine, it will have thoughts of its own.